I don't want to do this anymore. <laughs> Okay, welcome to today's webinar. Thank you for joining joining us today. <laughs> uh, my name is Carol Reese. I'm a registered nurse and a nursing advisor um, on the practice team here at the SRNE. My role today is to help facilitate the webinar. Before we start, I would like to acknowledge this presentation is being held on Aboriginal land and recognize the strength, resilience, and capacity of the Treaty 4 and Métis people in this land. Today's topic is... Um, Saskatchewan Nurses Foundation, uh, professional development for Saskatchewan RNs and the role of the Saskatchewan Nurses Foundation. Um, our presenter today is Robin Evans, who is a registered nurse and associate dean of the College of Nursing at the U of R. Okay, so before we get started, I have a couple of notes uh, on how you can engage throughout this presentation. As a viewer of this webinar, you'll be able to to hear and see the presentation. Only panelists will be able to speak throughout the presentation. Um, if you have a question, please add them to the Q&A or the chat section. We will be monitoring this area for questions throughout the webinar, and these questions will be answered either live or via typed response. If you wish to send your question anonymously, just check the box at, or check the box at the bottom of the Q&A screen. We will record this webinar and it may be posted on the SRNA website for those who are not available to join today to view later. An email will be sent, with, sent to you with a link for your evaluation. We hope you'll take a couple of minutes and complete the quick survey. Now that we have the housekeeping items out of the way, I will turn the microphone over to Robin Evans. Thank you, Carol, and thank you for the opportunity to come and speak. Um, about the Nurses Foundation. Um, I'm actually here in my role as Executive Director of Nurses Foundation today, so um, just to add that. Um, so I thought... Um, sorry. Um, okay, so what I'm going to go through today is a little bit of the history, how the foundation started, how it became an independent body, a little bit about some of the fundraising activities we've um, engaged in over the years, um, talk a bit about the foundation today, uh, talk about the bursary program, uh, fundraising opportunities, and uh, finish off with contributions to nursing and healthcare in Saskatchewan. So in May, it started way back, like this is now 40 years ago, uh, which is amazing. Um, it started uh, in May of 1979 at the SRNA Annual General Meeting. There was a resolution passed that said, whereas there's a recognized need in Saskatchewan for nurses with advanced education preparation, and whereas there is limited bursary assistance available to meet the needs of those nurses who require financial assistance for further studies, be it resolved that Saskatchewan Registered Nurses Association create a, a trust fund to be known as the Saskatchewan Nurses Foundation with power to receive donations and invest same and disperse funds to members of the Saskatchewan Registered Nurses Association for continuing education. So that was the very beginning. At the annual meeting the next year, um, SNF was created uh, as part of SRNA and that was through an amendment to the Registered Nurses Act. And so the foundation became official in June of 1981 after approval by government and royal assent. Um, so the purpose at that time was to uh, supply funds to nurses studying for advanced degrees or taking courses in nursing administration, education, clinical practice, or doing nursing research, or developing a new skill or practice, or attending a professional development conference or workshop. So just to, uh, we've gone away from uh, funding research. That only lasted for the first two few years uh, because the amount of funding that's needed for research is was so high that um, it wasn't practical to do that. It was better to uh, concentrate on funding um, education. And for a while we had only done um, degree programs and um, clinical courses of more than five days and then a number of years ago we've gone back and we've started funding again professional development conferences and workshops. So we've kind of gone circle around. 
at that time, because it was part of SRNA, the directors of SRNA acted as directors of the foundation, so it was the board. Um, and they established three committees at that time, uh, one that was the Bursary and Loans Committee, one was called Development of Scholarship Funds Committee, and one was a Public Relations Committee. Uh, the foundation received its first, very first donation in June of 1979, uh, and that was from Peggy Rosso, who um, throughout her, uh, the rest of her life, remained uh, uh, very much an um, ardent supporter of the foundation. Um, at, as well, SRNA donated $5,000 to start the fund. And uh, the SNF became a registered charity under the Income Tax Act at that time. In 1980, Hester Kernan, who was the Dean of the College of Nursing at the University of Saskatchewan, and Louise Minor, who was Director of Public Health Nursing at the Government of Saskatchewan, both retired. And they requested that the donations be, uh, in lieu of retirement gifts, be provided to SRNA. And so there was $2,392 donated to establish the Kernan Minor Scholarship Fund. Um, and then SRNA donated $50,000 to be invested. And that was so that the interest could pay for assistance to nurses rather than using just the principal. And that has actually been our uh, philosophy since. In 1984, SNF decided that we should become independent of SRNA. So we started to go through that process. And in 1988, it was registered as a nonprofit corporation with Revenue Canada. The first meeting of the SNF Board of Directors was held in November of 1988. Um, at that time, there were nine members of the Board of Directors, six were nurses, and three directors were not nurses. Um, one of the first things that happened uh, when the foundation was first established was that uh, one of their fundraising activities was to create what they called Founders Grants. And to be uh, a member of that group uh, to provide a founder's grant, um, it required a $1,000 donation over a five year period between 1981 and 1986. And so there were 12 individuals, 15 SRNA chapters, which for anybody who isn't familiar with that old system, uh, each of the different cities and towns had, a lot of them had chapters. Um, and so those were, uh, there were 15 of those who were uh, founders. Uh, the Regina General Hospital Alumni Association, SRNA professional staff, and Siba Gigi um, Canada Limited were all, um, and still are recognized as uh, founders. Between 1985 and 1988, a donation program was established, um, and there were four different levels. Uh, people who contributed as a contributor, which was between $10 and $49. Uh, there were 57 donors. A friend contributed between $50 and $99, and there were 58 donors. A supporter contributed between $100 and $499, and there were 87 of those individuals. And patrons were considered uh, people who were donated $500 or more, and we had 20 of those donors. Other major fundraisers that have been um, established over the time. Um, one was a book that was called Good Morning Susan that was published by Dr. Joe Brown. Um, it was a story of his life. He was an obstetrician gynecologist in Regina. Um, and the proceeds from that book all went to SNF. And that raised a fair number of, uh, a fairly significant donation for us. Over the years, we've had auctions, quite a significant number of them. The very first one was called the SNF Night of Fun in 1988. I think it was, I think it was held at the, uh, what used to be, the, or what's now the Everest. Um, seems to me that's where it was. Uh, we had SNF auctions held between 1989 and 2009, and those were always held in conjunction with the SRNA banquet at the annual general meetings. Uh, the banquet would occur and then the, um, 
the auction would happen after. And we went away from that when uh, the awards, SRNA established their awards of excellence uh, because the night became too long. Uh, we had an auction that was held in 2006 in conjunction with the CNA Biennium. In 2007, the foundation did what was called a nurse's night out. Uh, we hired a, an external group to help to organize it um, and seek out uh, donors for us and uh, supporters. Um, and that raised a significant amount of money. And then we had um, auctions between, uh, Nurses Night Out auctions between 2011 and 2014. And we went away from them because our attendance dwindled. Um, it seemed like we had perhaps done too many. Um, but then it was revived again um, in 2017 with the SRNA 100th Anniversary Gala. We had an auction at the same time as that. We had another book, uh, Dr. Sandra Basandowski published a book called A Portrait of Saskatchewan Nurses in Military Times. And the proceeds from the sale of that book uh, went to the Elizabeth Basandowski Award. So if we fast forward to today, the board of directors can be between six to 10 Saskatchewan residents. And at the moment it is uh, nine. Um, if and the directors, uh, there needs to be four to six of those directors who are members of SRNA. Uh, we have one director spot that's designated for a representative from SRNA and one who is de designated as a representative from Sun. Uh, the other board members are, um, don't have to be members of SRNA. We have several, we have two, um, public representatives and we have one vacant public representative position at the moment. Board of directors are elected for a two-year term and they're eligible for a re-election for one, one subsequent term. Uh, there are three officers of the foundation, the president, vice president, and secretary treasurer. Uh, our committees are a little bit mirroring the original committees in a way. We have an awards committee, we have a communications committee, we have an investment committee, and a nominations committee. Next, I'll turn to the bursary program. We provide bursaries for, uh, in four different areas. For degree programs, we provide funding at the baccalaureate, master's, and PhD level. We provide funding for clinical courses of more than five days, uh, for professional development conferences and workshops of no more than five days, and also for the CNA certification exam. For degree level programs, eligibility means that you, uh, the individual needs to be registered as a practicing member with SRNA. Uh, they need to be enrolled in a nursing baccalaureate program or a master's or doctoral program applicable to nursing. So it can be in anything else, any other uh, could be education, administration. Um, it doesn't have to be in nursing, it just has to be something that's applicable. There are maximum amounts of bursaries. For, uh, for the baccalaureate level, it's $4,000. At the master's level, it's $6,000. And at the doctoral level, it's $10,000. And an individual is allowed only one maximum bursary at each program level, although that may be distributed over one or more years. So for example, you could have, um, at a master's level, you get $2,000 over three years before you were, uh, reach the maximum. For clinical courses of more than five days, um, some examples might be that we've seen individuals um, do our people have our, um, for example, the OR course would be one of the programs that would be eligible. Um, diabetes educator, those type of, of courses are typically the kinds that uh, fall in this category. To be eligible, an individual has to be registered as a practicing member with SRNA. 
and they have to be enrolled in a clinical course applicable to nursing. And there's only one maximum bursary of $2,000 at this level, but again, it can be awarded, awarded over one or more years. For professional development conferences and workshops, individuals need to be registered as practicing members again with SRMA, and they cannot have received funding from another source for the uh, conference or workshop. Uh, the maximum is one bursary at this level for one event per application deadline, once a year. Um, and it, the conference or workshop must have occurred up to 12 months prior to the date of application. So individuals apply once they've already attended, not in anticipation of attendance. The registration fee must be more than $100. And the maximum is $750 in the calendar year. For the CNA certification exam, individuals are eligible, again, if they are registered as a practicing member with SRMA. They must have successfully passed the certification exam, and they must have not received funding from another source. And it's available for initial certification only, not for subsequent. There is a policy that says the amount of the award cannot exceed the tuition, the registration fee, or the exam fee, depending on which program uh, the uh, bursary is, is awarded under. Um, and individuals must work in Saskatchewan in a professional nursing capacity for one year for every $2,000 of bursary received or proportionate. So if an individual receives $1,000, they would then need to practice in Saskatchewan for six months to fulfill those requirements. And the professional nurse in a professional nursing capacity is determined to be anything that SRNA recognizes as practice that counts towards um, the nurse's hours of practice. So it's quite broad. So the application is available on the um, nurse on the SNF website. Uh, which is www.saskatchewannursesfoundation.org. The application deadline is September the 30th, and the academic year is considered to be September 1st to August 31st. That's for the degree programs and for clinical courses. Each request for funding must be a new application. So if I got received a bursary last year and I want to apply again for a bursary, I have to complete the entire application again. And that's just for ease of, of um, uh, making sure that we've got all the pieces together and that everything is current. Late or incomplete applications are not considered. So it must be postmarked by September 30th. Um, otherwise, it won't be considered. The applications are typically up uh, in January or February, so they uh, so we don't uh, accept anything late. So one of the issues that I see most often with applications forms is that people don't always submit all the information, or they don't submit it in the way that they need to. So there is a guideline document for each award level posted with the application form. Please follow it. It will make it a lot easier for you to ensure that you have uh, everything that you need in place. And I'm just going to click on this work. I click on this. We'll try. Okay. Let's see if it works. Just drag that over to the second screen that we're supposed to see. Okay, so if you go in order to apply for the bursary, if you go to the bursaries and you go to oops, go to application forms, you'll see what I mean. So here's the application for clinical courses for more than five days. And here's the complete application guidelines. 
So the application you can fill in online, but you need to mail it. You need to print it off, sign it in person, and then mail it in. And this is the application guideline that I said um, is a really good thing to follow because it will help to ensure that you're completing everything that you need to in the way that you need to so that you're not worried. Um, if someone supplies the gets their application and just at the deadline and something's missing or something's not complete, uh, there's nothing we can do to help you. Um, if it's really early, I, sometimes I can go through them and send emails um, asking individuals to, or letting people know that there's something that hasn't been completed. But if it's at the deadline um, or close to the deadline, that's not always possible. So there's, so there's a clinical course, CNA certification exam, degree level programs, and professional development conferences and workshops. And there's a guideline for each of those, and they're updated each time. Minimize that because I'm going to go back to it. So, we do have a number of named bursaries. Um, a named bursary um, occurs when there's a, 15, 000, a minimum $15,000 donation. The bursary is named for the donor or the donor, donor's designate. Um, we also have a policy that the Board of Directors can designate a bursary in recognition of outstanding service or commitment to the foundation. So we do have a Jean Manny bursary, which the Board of Directors did designate in recognition of Jean's uh, longstanding uh, commitment to the foundation. She was the first president. Um, and this is a list of our awards that we have that are named. So we have the Elizabeth Basandowski Award. Uh, we have a Heather Keith Bursary for Nurse Practitioners, which will be awarded for the first time this year. Uh, we have the Jean Manny Bursary, uh, Leesburg Stamler Bursary, the Muriel Allen Niblet Bursary, which hasn't been awarded at the, as of yet. Uh, the Regina Gray Nuns Hospital Alumni Bursary, Saskatoon City Hospital Nurses Alumni Bursary, the SRNA Advanced Practice Award, and the Walker Moreau Bursary, which hasn't been awarded yet. And we also will have one more coming. We just haven't. So this is a little bit difficult to see, but it does show for each of the years how, since 1981, how many bursaries have been awarded and what the value was. Um, so the very first year in 1981, four bursaries were actually awarded. One at a master's level, one at a baccalaureate, and two clinical courses uh, for a total of $3,500. Um, and if we go down to last year, we had 19 bursaries awarded. We had uh, five doctoral, seven masters, nine baccalaureate, uh, two clinical, two PD courses and three CNA certification for a total of 18,900. So we've grown over the years. Oh, and I should say the amount of the bursaries that is provided is what is designated by um, the Canada Revenue Agency. They have a formula for how much has to be given. So that's how that's determined. So if we turn next to fundraising, um, we have memberships um, that uh, in the foundation. Uh, we have two categories. We have a nurse category and we have a non-nurse category. This is probably the best deal for memberships, certainly my best deal ever um, for all the memberships that I hold in different uh, organizations. Um, SNF's annual fees are $15 a year, which works out to about two lattes. Um, plus, you get a tax receipt for it. It provides the right to vote at the annual general meeting, the right to hold office, and the monies collected support the bursary program. Um, and for some of the named bursaries, um, SNF membership is required. For the, the normal bursaries, uh, just the SNF ones, it is not required, but some, um, some of the named bursaries, the terms of reference, have been identified to include that. We also have a new graduate program 
where um, individuals who have graduated from a basic nursing education program, once they are registered, uh, we provide a one-year complimentary um, membership in SNS. Um, and the application is available on the website. If you click here under become a member. There. So the application is down here. So I just want to, one of the things that people don't always, uh, where I have to send back emails, is um, about, there's a question about, I'm apply, that says I'm applying under the new graduate program. So if you're one of the individuals who's just graduated from a basic nursing education program, you would click yes to that question. If you haven't just graduated, you click no. And when you click no, you will get, hmm, Oh, I again. You will get a thing asking you to submit your application and then pay your membership by clicking on this buy now down at the bottom. So I just wanted to note that for people because that's one of the things that people, they'll say no, but they won't pay, uh, they won't um, submit the membership fee. Or I've had some people who have said, so I don't know if it's somebody who's a new graduate or not. So it takes some time to get back to that. So. Um, we also have sell memberships at the SRNA annual meeting. Um, and in the past we have at the Sun annual meeting. We just weren't there this year because they didn't have room. So, um, but we have been selling memberships at both and had great success with that. And as I said, the membership program helps to support the bursary program. We also accept donations, uh, both regular and memory donations. Uh, there is an individual credit tax receipt for the donation, and it's recognized in our SNF annual report. Uh, there's two ways that people can donate. They can donate uh, through a link on the SNF website, or go directly, which will take you to Canada Helps, or through Canada Helps itself, and just put in Saskatchewan Nurses Foundation. Uh, you can direct uh, a donation to a specific fund. So if you want it to go to a general fund, or if you want it to go to one of the named bursaries, you can direct that at, at that there. It will ask you if you want to donate and give you a list. Uh, there are memory donations as well uh, that individuals can um, send to us. We provide a card of recognition to whomever um, you tell us that you want it sent to. And the memory donation is put in the SNF memory book and that's uh, available on the website as well. We also have planned giving. We've received uh, several um, donations for, for, through planned giving. Um, and if anybody is interested in uh, further information, they can contact us directly and we can work with the, the individual um, and their lawyers or whoever they need to, um, to help to um, facilitate that for them. Um, we have upcoming events and opportunities. Our annual general meeting will be held in September. Uh, the date will be, to, uh, will be announced shortly. Uh, we do have two RN positions available on the board and two non-nurse positions. Uh, one of the non-nurse positions, we're looking for somebody with expertise in um, communications. So if anybody knows of anyone who is interested in that, please send them my way. Uh, we're also looking at having a fundraising event in the fall. So the contributions to nursing and healthcare in Saskatchewan has been fairly significant. Since 1981, we've awarded 497 bursaries. And as some individuals have received bursaries at more than one level or more than one, burs uh, more than one bursary. Um, so 
when I look at the list, uh, that's over 480 individuals nurses who have benefited. We've given out, um, as I said earlier, a total of $462,042.50 awarded. We've given 59 doctoral awards, 169 master's awards, 159 baccalaureate awards, 61 clinical course awards, 37 PD conference awards, and 12 CNA certification awards. So if you think about the contributions that those individuals um, provide to the um, healthcare in the, in the province, um, and depending, I mean, uh, it may be to other nurses as well, um, that's significant. And we look at the total return in service because there has always been a return for service component to the um, foundation. Uh, since 2011, it's been one or two, $2,000, for every $2,000 one year of service. Before that, it was $1,000 and one year of service. So if you look at that total of what we've provided in awards, that's 390 years of total return in service to the people of Saskatchewan, which when I added that up, I hadn't figured that out before and it was it's like impressive, actually. Um, so we have supported registered nurses, um, registered nursing, and the people of Saskatchewan um, for their, um, for healthcare. Thank you. Is there any questions? And I just wanted to put our foundation's um, website out and our email address, as, which is snf at accesscom.ca. I have a question, Helen. Sure. Um, so with the, because we often get calls into our practice team looking for funding for different things. So usually it's the short courses, like less than five days. Yeah. So there's one intake. Right, you yes. have to apply for that September 30th. So is that for education that's coming up or no. education that's in the past? It's education that's in the past. Okay, okay. Because we wanted to know that funding, the, the thinking of the committee at the time when that policy was made was that we wanted to make sure that we were giving funding to people who had already gone to something. Um, so that, cause you know, things happen. Um, and even if people return the funding, it's funding that isn't necessarily used, right? That could have been used by someone else. And so that was the rationale for going. Mm -hmm. um, and we initially tried to do it twice a year, award it twice a year, but we found that it was too unpredictable. But doing it earlier in terms of how much money we had available to give out versus how much we would leave over. And so um, we just decided to do it once a year because that way we could fund in a more fair and um, easy way. Yeah, keep track of it all. Mm -hmm. So in September, in the fall, with that September 30th guideline, yeah. the deadline, you'll be looking at education that occurred from September 1 to August, September 1 18 to October 30th. 1. October 1. Because it was September 30th. Oh, yeah. The deadline. Okay. So October 1 <laughs> to yeah. September. Okay. Very good. And that's for any of the bursaries? Yes, any of them. Well, except or, for the, the degree program and the clinical courses, they are August uh, 31st to, or August, September 1st to August 31st, because it's the academic year. But always the year before, money that's already been spent, you know, by the back. Perfect. Okay. okay, any other questions? Okay, so next week's topic is academic leaders' perceptions of the doctor of nursing practice degree as educational preparation for nursing. That's quite a handle. <laughs> Anyways, so if you've, uh, if you've missed uh, a webinar, you can view many of them on the SRNA's Vimeo or YouTube channels. And thank you again to Robin for joining us. See you next time. Sorry, I'm just going to pull it back up. Thank you.